All right, welcome back. It's been too long. It's Thursday night again, and I don't know, it seems like it takes way too long to get here. Uh, we've been in teaching mode lately here in the shop, so we uh, don't have the new course ready yet, but we will announce that next Thursday night. So if you're itching for that new course, uh, that we'll do as a live stream again on Tuesday evenings and Saturday mornings. We will announce next Thursday night. And by the way, if you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. No sense delaying it anymore, and I appreciate that. And also, you can like and share and ring the bell and all that other fun stuff. <laughs> but um, I just got my hair cut. The camera lady does it all. Second one of this virus season. <laughs> <laughs> that shows you how long we go. But it's been so humid around here, I had like a uh, poof head. But anyway, I feel great now. <laughs> uh, we're going to get started on a shop project. Like every now and then, you know, this is, I'm getting ready for the class that begins a week from Monday, a chair making class. And I was working on some pieces in the finishing room and I just getting tired of my rickety finishing table. Um, I've gone through a few different ones over the years, but I decided that I wanted another table that was more solid, that I could put accessories on top of it that even had like a turntable that I could spin a piece while I'm spraying. I, I like to spray shellac and sometimes lacquer on smaller projects and um, anyway I didn't want a table that was fixed I wanted it to be able to break down so the thought of sawhorses with a solid top that could be fitted on and fitted on in such a way that it wouldn't slide around and it would be pretty solid feeling but I could break it down really quickly uh, so that's my project for tonight is to build some sawhorses. Now, I'm building these a little lower than I probably would if I was going to use them on a job site. I already have like these big ones that are, you know, pretty high. I guess they're almost as high as my bench. Um, so, you know, you can make them as high as you like. Uh, 30 inches you could go, but I want these sawhorses to be down at 26. Because on top of that, I'm, gonna, I'm using it mainly to finish furniture. So the furniture is going to be up here when it's sitting on that table. And a lot of times uh, in the finishing room, we would use a very low table if we're finishing like a chest of drawers that's, you know, really big. So you've got to think about how it's going to be up in space and how you might be using your, your sawhorse. Now... There's a lot of people out there building sawhorses, I noticed. And uh, I'm not, I, I like to get it done and knock it out, but I can't resist like putting some little nice details in there. But they're not, there's not a lot of pressure to throw like a, a dovetail or something in there. Now, you don't want to be fussy. It's a, it's a sharp sawhorse. But it is nice to look at it and feel good about it, you know. Um, I looked, I was looking in Fine Woodworking Magazine recently about sawhorses, see what they were talking about. There was a fairly recent article with Chris Bexford where he showed three different ones. But there was this one that was back, I think it's issue 103. So it was a while ago. And this idea is drawn from that. And I think I must have looked at that a long time ago because... I built the base for my lathe in a very similar fashion. <laughs> and that I built back 25 years ago. So I'm coming back to my sawhorse plan. But let me show you. This is my little sketch that I made. And it's part of the, is it part of the thing? The, is it part of the thing? Part of the. the oh, the thumbnail? Yeah. Yes, the it thumbnail. is on the thumbnail. Yeah. Yep. So here it is. Are you zoomed in on it? I am. Oh, okay. Just hold awesome. it as still as you can. Okay. But look at that. 
fine representation. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth the view. <laughs> so I've got it, I'm configuring it a little differently because I'm not going to be out cutting boards on it, you know, to build on a building site. I already have saw horses like that. Typically those saw horse types, the, the top of it would be a horizontal plank or, you know, a two by six, you know, so it's got a good wide flat surface, you know, four to five or six inches wide. And so you have a good flat surface to rest a board on. Mine, I'm flipping it up on edge because I want it to be a strong kind of spine, like a support for another table. It can also work on a job site. I mean, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, you can actually saw using these as well. And I'm making it so that that top rail is also changeable. So if you get a lot of saw cuts in it and you want to switch it out later on, you can do it. And it'll just mean taking out a few screws and dropping a new, new one. So this is going to be a pretty clever uh, little saw horse. <laughs> <laughs> You're always clever. <laughs> so anyway, the legs are going to come up, and rather than just slap them on the side, they're going to bird mouth underneath the uh, rail. And then the cross piece or stretchers down here, rather than just nailing that on, I'm going to use an indexed through dovetail, which is really fun to cut. It's, it's pretty easy to cut. Um, but it's a good place to practice your dovetailing. Um, it's, it's pretty forgiving. Well, we'll see how forgiving it is. I actually haven't finished one of these. I tried. I got a lot of pieces today. So I'm hoping to get enough to show you. And if it has to go over to another week, we might have to do that. Because as I was doing it, I'm like, wow, this is a little more complicated than I thought. But it is a fast build, so just just follow along. <laughs> so then, um, and then there's going to be a horizontal shelf that also will do an indexed through dovetail that'll drop in. So anyway, I took this, and then I did a drawing, as you know I'm into doing. Can you see that? It is showing up. I tried to darken the lines a little bit. Can you see these? Get there here. Yeah, the I think we can. Out. Yeah. All They're right. Light, but I think we can see them. Okay. So, oh, <laughs> I forgot the the story behind the material. I'll tell you in a minute. But this base is about 18 inches wide, right there, and my stock dressed down to, I think it's um, just under one and three eighths thick, and everything's the same thickness. So here's my, the side view of one of the end sections, and here's the vertical piece across the top. So it's everything, this is just a, um, it's just three and a half inches wide. And all my legs are also, I ripped those to be three and a half as well. Just like a two by four, but it's thinner. And then down here, I'm gonna have, you can barely see that line because I did it very faintly, but this is where the stretcher height's gonna go. There'll be five inches up to the bottom of it, and it's going to be two and a half inches high. So to build the sawhorse, you're just really building this end section, and I'm going to use this drawing on this board as an assist to actually assemble the piece as well. So this was a fairly simple thing to draw. I just drew my height, which is 26 right here, and I had a center line. And then I went nine inches to each side to get my 18. I just used something that felt right. And then I did the slope here, and I wanted like some meat up here for this bird mouth, but I wanted it to come under. So it comes under like three eighths of an inch, and there's a quarter inch here. So this will be screwed on we're looking at the end of the end rail. And then the only thing that'll be a little more basic is I'm gonna put a half inch gusset right on here, right below that. And that'll allow us to sub that out and give it more strength for racking 
and all that. All right, so that's our job. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I already, I'll show you the pieces. I want to cut this bird mouth to start off. Um, I'm going to show you the piece that I already got set, and then we can go ahead and do that. But here's the material that I started with. This is the only one left, this poor little tread. <laughs> this is the tread, one of the nine treads, I think, that went down to our basement. Um, since the house was built, we had these, you know, most people's basements, it wasn't finished. So the builders just put this um, two by 10 on for the stair treads and it's just a piece of pine. And you know, we lived a lot of life on these, going up and down these stairs, because the basement was a play area. And the camera lady likes being social. And she started a play group when we first moved in the house. So we have friends that their kids were like really little or just being born that spent a lot of time in that basement going up and down these stairs. One of them is watching tonight. Oh, really? Donna and Jim are watching. Oh, my gosh. Hey, guys. <laughs> so, uh, so these have been pretty well worn, and I finally upped my game in the basement and redid the stairs going to the, the – I should show you that someday. That's a little anal. <laughs> but I have beautiful new hardwood treads, and everything's nice. And I pulled these off, and I couldn't just throw them away. I don't know why. Maybe you look at my attic and you can see why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. No, I got an issue about the things. Away. But I, I wanted to do something with them. I was going to, and it dawned on me, why not use the stair treads? I could make these sawhorses out of reclaimed lumber. Don't just trash it. And so I ripped it up, and then I ran it through. Let me get this over here. I ran it. Once I ripped it up into like four inches wide, I flattened one face on the joiner and then ran it through the thickness planer. You've seen me process wood a lot if you've been on here. Um, so then I had the thickness. I was just going for as thick as we could get out of it. And yes, it's just about, just about inch and three eighths in between. So... Once I had that, I jointed an edge, and I ripped it to width. So this is three and, three and a half inches wide. And got that stock all set. And then uh, that's about it. Then I made some other parts as well. But this is the last one. And I didn't use this one. Well, I set it aside because it had really major knot, like right there. Ray's asking if it's old growth pine. No. <laughs> No, this was builder material, so... Not the that nice, huh? No, the builders, back when they built our house in 98, just bought... Uh, so you can see how fast growth this is. and But it's pretty decent pine. It's just building grade, though. So that's where we were trying to be resourceful and get our materials. Now, here, I've got one of the pieces and I've got a piece that is uh, already square at one end so this is going to be our model that I'll show you cutting the bird mouth uh, setup and to do that I'll just square it up it's a little long down at this end and what I did was can you come on in for this one? Sure. Um, what's great about having a drawing like this if you draw it pretty accurately you know I like drawings. You put the, the top of the square leg right in position. Just lay it right on top. And then I laid it right there. And I've got it right on my splay line, which goes out to the 18-inch number. And set it right there. And when I got that all figured out, I measured the length, the long length, to the long point. And this piece has to be 26 and a quarter inches long to the long point. But also, once it's up on here, I could mark it. And I made a pencil mark 
right off the drawing, right there, and then squared it up, and then I got the angle running this way. Um, I'll show you the angle in a second. But at the top, I did the exact same thing. I just marked right where the bottom of the bird's mouth was going to hit. And then if I can turn it this way, you can see the top, how that piece comes in. And I marked it right up there. So then at the top, I used the same slope angle as this is, which turns out to be 18 degrees or 72 degrees, however you want to think about it. And so that's what this is and that. So I just recreated this shape right off the drawing. What could go wrong? <laughs> that's, that, was our, <laughs> that was our theme for uh, the class last week. <laughs> we used to say, <laughs> what could go wrong? We are building the, those tables with, uh, with the drawers. Um, so anyway, the thing about working with angles like this is you don't even really have to know what the number is, you know, whether it's 63 degrees, 72 degrees, as this turned out to be, if you have a bevel gauge like this. Because once you draw it, you just draw whatever angle, connect the dots, I got my angle. I just brought the bevel gauge up and adjusted it so that it was aligned on the edge of the board, the hard board, and I got it adjusted to the line and then locked it in. Now, I know it's 72 because I took, I knew somebody would wonder. <laughs> so I took this little uh, protractor and set it on there, same way. And I could read the number, which you probably can't see it, but it is 72 or 18 degrees off of 90. So anyway, that's what's locked in to this bevel gauge right now. And with all that information, we're ready to go to the table saw and make a bird mouth cut. So let's head over there. We're going, the, the shop has been kind of, turned upside down and different. If you've been around here, you're not used to walking over here. So <laughs> this is where, this is the corner where I've relegated the table saw. And the camera lady has enough extension where she can get in here. Look at that. So this is where we're going to make our cuts. And what we want to do initially is lay our blade over. But before we do that, I just want to show you making this cut down here. Now, I didn't cut this length yet. I just marked it right off the drawing. But that's an easy cut. We, for, we have to tilt the blade over and make that cut. Now, I actually, when I cut all the other pieces, I got to show you this at some point. I used the Felder slider table saw. I know, I know. Some of you like, would love to have a saw like that, I know. But it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, I'm only getting to appreciate the precision of that saw. It makes me feel good every time I use it now. But uh, I know most of you don't have that saw. It's more like this right now in your shop, and maybe it always will be. So I want to show you using this saw. But I am going to give you some little peeks at that every now and then, because I think it's just fun and inspiring to see a different level of machine in the shop. I understand it's, it's a lot for most people. I mean, look, I didn't even have that saw for, forever. Where are my glasses? Mike says that it's good to live vicariously through. <laughs> OK. So, yes, yeah. you show it. I know some people, though, you might want one of those saws when you see it work. All right, I, had, I didn't make this cut yet because I used the felder. Now I'm not prepared <laughs> to use my good old saw. But uh, the felder, if some of you don't know, it's a, it's a beautiful Aust Austrian-made saw in the European style, which 
is a slide has a slider table. It's like got a giant cross cut sled that's built right into it. On an American cabinet saw, to have a good this is your slider. <laughs> you can build yourself, and they work great, but uh, it sure is nice to have that dedicated one. Now, let me see if I can, I'm not sure if I can lay this over all the way that we need to. Uh, so, I'm laying the blade over. No, I can't. So, I'm going to just put it up again. And I'll come up through my piece here. Maybe I should get my other sled. Where is it? <laughs> Sorry, this is not good production. Let's see, is what it? can I show you? You've seen the bed posts? <laughs> That's the Talk post, amongst yourselves. A table Tom made a picture of it. Yeah. Stairs to the attic. Somebody mentioned, Bob said, show us the attic. I, I don't know, Bob, if you were around when we did a video up in the attic. We did. Back, I think, in the fall. I have no idea what episode number that is, but I think it was around Halloween, actually. <laughs> it was a freak show. If I remember correctly. That's for sure. Yeah, it was a little scary so going up there. You can go look at that there. <laughs> that, <laughs> that poster, by the way. It's kind of an odd place to have one, isn't it? <laughs> Why do you think it's there? You what, don't know, what? do you? It's there because we had some critters up there and some stain came down the wall. Isn't that awful? Oh, that picture is there because yeah. of that? Oh, I didn't know that. Anyway, the critters are long gone. <laughs> but the stain remains. But no one knows because you just throw a picture over it. It's like turning up the radio. So I'm going to repeat this. Uh, Chuck found the fine woodworking plan in issue 105. Okay, 105. March Check. to April 1994. Yeah, it's not, this is just kind of, I do, I'm not using the same proportions or anything. I am using a very similar uh, index dovetail on the base. So you'll be able to see how to go about that if you've not done that before as we do this. Oh, All right. show us the new stairs is what he meant. Sorry, Bob. Okay. <laughs> What's, oh, Those are in, in our the house. house. Yeah. Uh, so um, I didn't even, I was just talking while I was doing this. But when, now I want to set that angle. I want to get it dead on. I haven't moved my bevel gauge. So this comes over to the table saw. I'm not even looking at the numbers. I don't need to know the numbers. I have this. This is direct, right off the drawing right to the table saw bevel. So I just lay it over and I go between two teeth until I see that hit flat. You got to say it like that. Flat. <laughs> I have no idea why I said that. Uh, right like that. And when it hits flat, you know you've got the accurate angle of your saw blade just as you had it set up. Now, I'm going to drop this down a little because I'm not sure. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Dean said, why paint when you have a picture? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Dean. It's like you got a noise in your car, you turn up the radio. <laughs> it's the same principle. Pretty bad. All right. So I'm going to raise this up now. Lewis is asking if you've ever used a Wixie to set your angles. Oh, the little, di what is that, Lewis? The digital thing? I've got one. Thanks to Bruce. I just didn't put a battery, I thought about it today and I, I haven't even put the battery in that. I'm sorry, Bruce, I haven't, I'm lacking on that. Okay, so let me show you cutting this now when you don't have a felder. Of course, you could do this on a chop saw as well. You could change the angle of your chop saw and cut across. But I like making detailed cuts like this. You can do them rapidly with a stop at the other end and cut your angle dead on when you build yourself a sled that's true and square. And it rides in the guide rails on your table saw. There's no movement. It's just beautiful, nice and accurate. 
unlike, you know, not all chop saws are created equal. And uh, they don't all work the same. I could have sworn I brought my safety glasses over here. Um, Steve, I think he moved this over here because of yeah. the classes. We needed the space on that side of the room. Yeah. For the just benches for the students. Correct. Steve's asking if you're going to be using the felder a little bit more. Is that why you moved it over here? Uh, no, I moved it here, yeah, for the class uh, because we need that whole area over there. So we've got lots of room. Um, so. Stuart's asking, why between two teeth and not on the height of the highest tooth? Oh. Uh, Is that the angle? Stuart, I'm trying to reference the blade of the bevel gauge flat against the table saw blade. The carbide teeth themselves protrude and they flare out and they're wider than the body of the blade. So you, don't, you can't tell if you've got the accurate slope or angle of the blade unless you're between two teeth and you can see it hit flat between the teeth. Okay, so I'm gonna just make a quick test cut here. This is kind of a janky base. It's been fixed a lot. I'm just gonna... Okay, so that went well, and that'll do it for our night here at the shop. <laughs> I feel like it's been a lot of time to make that one cut. So anyway, we're now going to make the bird mouth cut. <laughs> Why? I'm just going to throw that on the ground. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Is that where it goes? Maybe that's just where it goes. Yeah, that's where it goes. I don't have a scrap box right over here. <coughs> okay, so now all of the bird mouth cuts are, because of this angle now that we've established on the feet, those bird mouth cuts are at the same angle as that foot angle. So everything stays the same. So now it looks like a plum cut. I can't see it from that side, but does it look plum, like vertical? To you? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the Carolina expertise. Absolutely does. I'm convinced. And, and then that other cut is coming across horizontally. It should be looking at like a... Oh, yeah. I'm, I, maybe I should be... I'm sorry. You're, t you're making reference to the lines on the... The lines, okay. yeah, up here. The bird mouth. I apologize. So... This now is plum. Should have known. Bird mouths. I mean, I just should have known. Okay. So then this horizontal cut down at the bottom is going to sit under the rail. So here we go. We don't change the angle of the blade at all to make this next cut. We're going to make it vertically. And by holding the piece up like this, we've got it already laid over to our 18 degrees to make that perfect angled cut. Now it's a pretty high cut and it's a little tricky to do if you did it just with your fence like this. Because what we're going to do is we've got to raise that blade up. We've got to raise that blade almost two and a quarter inches. Um, so let's go right on up. to two and a quarter. And I'm going to check this angle. Let me see here. So I'm trying to get the correct height here. So the long way, it's two and a little over three eighths. But if I measure straight up and down, it's right at two and a quarter. So I want to be a little less than that. Um, so I don't overcut it. 
I'm going to make this ver verti long vertical cut first, and then we'll come in and we'll make that cross cut there. Now, to hold this vertically, I'm not going to just run it through like that. I'm going to use our handy dandy tenoning jig. It's, it does everything. It's, it's got a high fence on it, about six, seven inch high fence here, and it's set up to be nice and square. Now, and it rides right on my fence. So it gives me this added flexibility and control of a piece like this when I put it in vertically. Now, if you want to make one of these and you haven't seen it already, we did do a video on it a couple months ago, at least. Probably. Maybe three months. Yeah. And uh, it's I can a, put the link. I'll put the link after. Yeah, it's a pretty easy build. A lot of people have built it and really enjoy it. I've got a lot of nice notes about it. It's uh, a nice alternative for the, um, those metal ones that have the cranks on them and everything. You don't, uh, you don't need to fuss with it. You just use your fence. It's awesome. Now I'm just tapping it over and locking it in so I can see it on the pencil line. And that looks pretty good right there. Now I added this vertical piece behind instead of my usual backer block this is the usual backup block that's on here for cutting tenons but I took it off because I didn't want to wreck it with this big cut and I just wanted to make another have another piece that makes this long cut in it so I just took another piece of pine and got it knocked on here and put a screw in there that's holding it at 90 and where's our end okay so now we're ready and this I'm gonna I've got it set just the waist side of the line and we're ready to make this cut now if you're gonna build a set of saw horses you'd be over here with probably eight legs like this so yes it takes you a little time to set it up but it's a pretty quick setup and you're gonna run eight legs so you're saving yourself a lot of time and look at the accuracy you're gaining so now I'm going to put on my goggles and earphones and we're going to get the dust collector going. Here we go. Okay, that's loud. Okay, so there, we made the cut. Came up shy of the line. Now we're gonna make that nice shoulder cut. So, we gotta drop the blade. I know, it's squeaking. <laughs> what will we do without it that? Wouldn't it be the same? I gotta grease that, I know it. All right, so this only goes about 3 eighths of an inch it's only a three-eighths bird mouth there, right? So we're going to drop this down considerably. And that looks pretty good. We'll see how that works. Now, in this case, I just need a backer, my cross cut. Something to hold it at 90. And this is not the nicest little miter gauge, but it works fine. And I square it up usually just using a square like this. Just like a drafting square. Works nice right off the fence. Lock it in. I'm good to go. Now I'm going to bring the fence up and bring it up and move it over. I hit the fence. Now, when that piece comes off, 
it might get trapped in there and pop. So I can do one of two things. I can cut it off, cut it smaller, or I could set up an L fence, an L type fence like this that would allow room for it to go under. Um, but you know what? I'm not going to bother with that right now. I only got one to do, so I'm going to cut it off. And I'm just going to do it right here with a Japanese saw. Let's see how this works. Now, when, when cutting like that, it's good to have a, a stop actually on this side because you're cutting on the pull stroke, but it cuts with so little resistance that if you need to make a quick one, there you go. Now I don't have to worry about anything kicking back, and I can just use the fence as our guide. Now, that doesn't look square for some reason, so let me double check. If I lost my square here, yeah, what happened? Must be the cheap miter gauge. <laughs> That's okay. We'll lock it in again. Boom. And we'll see this hit the fence nicely this time. And I'm just going to keep it tight to the fence. That'll give us a nice clean shoulder. There we are. Right to the line. And that's all you got to do. See now, by making our first cut vertically, our second cut laying down, moving 90 degrees horizontally, right? 90 degrees change there. We didn't move the angle of the blade at all. So we've got this angled cut that's 18 degrees, or off of 90, 18 degrees, and then this one's still at 18 degrees, so what you're left with is a beautiful inside corner of 90 degrees because one was cut here, one was cut here at 90 degree difference. So we're going to have a nice seat, a nice square seat for our sawhorse top rail. This will reference right off. All right, there we go. I'm going to make the cut, keeping it close, tight to the fence. All right, there we have it, our nice bird mouth. So let's go back to the bench here. I don't see how we're going to finish this tonight. <laughs> Am I going slow tonight? I don't know what it is. It just seems different. So now I've got to get that. <laughs> Camera lady's amused at I don't know why. But I've got kind of a bump of wood in there. See, I didn't quite get all the way to the bottom, so I just cleaned that up with a quick knife cut. And then I could just bring a chisel in. You got to clean out the mouth. Keep your mouth clean. Here we are. Look at that. Thing of beauty. So we put it back on our drawing. Get the lines to line up. And it's a really nice mirror of what's going on on our drawing. Look at that. See how that line comes up? If you come right around the corner, you can see our lines. And we've got it all set up nicely. So I've also got these others all done. Check it out. I went, I was busy. I got eight, eight of them done earlier using the same setup method. And there we have it. So, I'm going to bring a couple up. Look at that. 
that's pretty bad, but it doesn't even show on this side. So they're really not that deep, not a problem. It's a sawhorse. Those stairs weren't that great. <laughs> so I'm going to bring up a couple of nicer ones. So we got this one. Put it right on the line. Oh, looks beautiful. And then have another one and bring that up. Now, that'll be the relative position, these two guys. should probably put the knots on the inside, but it doesn't matter. So there we go. Now, this is where this table is going to be a help to us. It's going to be a jig. I'm going to get these out of the way. Now, the stretcher, I want to know that length because I want it to be, I'm going to have this let-in dovetail over here. Now, let me show you this. I'll show you this one. All right. So this piece was cut to length based on my drawing. I'm going to have to move these again quickly. You can see that line. I came out all the way. That's the bottom of my lower rail here, or stretcher. And look at that. It's right on the end. It's right at the pencil mark on the other end. So this angle is, of course, class, what is that angle again? What do you think it is? Very good. Yeah. Right. It's 72 degrees. Actually, it's 72 degrees this way, and it would be 108 degrees over here. Sorry, I shouldn't even explain that, right? But so this is, is, is going to be laying right across, and we want to get it in that nice angle right there, and it's going to be five inches up from the floor to that point. So what we're going to do is notch these out. And I don't have this on the drawing, but it's in my mind. So we're going to come down about three quarters of an inch, say to right there. And we're going to go about the thickness of our piece here. Let's go here. It'll be a notch here. So this is coming out. And then I'm going to make a line here. This is just roughly showing you. So this whole piece comes out right around here. And what that's going to do, it's going to give us an overlap that will be able to sit it on top and slide it upward until that shoulder right there hits perfectly. And it'll be set in place. Now I could just go right ahead and nail it then because I'll have like three quarters sticking up and there and you could. You could put nails and screws and glue in right there. But where would be the fun in that? I would say this is where now that we're indexed perfectly wouldn't it be cool if we could actually make a little dovetail here. Not a big one. Just using a half side of it. So a lot of dovetails they don't have to be angled on both sides. And we already have this strong angle here, and it's kind of weird to make one down there. So you only need one in this case, and one angle on one side. So I'm going to make it something like that and cut that out. So then it'll be put back, and it will reference there, and we'll be able to mark around it, and then cut it and drop it in. So it'll end up being flush with the outside with this rail. So this end will be over here and it will drop in all the way. Make sense? I think I have to see it. Oh. <laughs> well, the first thing we need to do is the offset. It'll be come clear really quickly, I think, when you see this. So we're going to make this offset cut and I'm going to set up on the table saw to make this cut using a three-quarter inch setting. So let's go back to the table saw 
and we'll go ahead and make this cut. Sorry, I've got to run you back there, but here we go. All right, so to do this, we're going to bring the saw blade back to vertical, go back to 90. Um, I'm not sure what we're talking about in relation to what. <laughs> I'll have to go back. I think he's talking about something over the drawing. I can, I can answer that when I get back over there. Okay, so we want, we want the height of this blade. We want to go up in there. Whoops, let me get it to the side. We're going to first make this vertical cut. We want that height to be the same as the thickness of the blade because we want that to fully let in. That'll, I'll show you that more as we get to it. So I'm going to just use a piece and drop it down a little below so we can get the height. There we are. Now we're going to use our fence again. And we'll set our fence to three quarters of an inch. Oh. There, it fell earlier, so I get it now. So I'm going to bring this up, and we're going to set it over, move it over till it's three quarters of an inch off the fence. I mean, you could make it seven eighths, or whatever, but I chose just three quarters here. And now I want to hold the piece vertically this way. Now, I didn't want to saw into that again, so I actually just took a scrap piece, put a piece of carpet tape there, and I'm going to stick it right on my fence as an additional backer. Okay, so this is parallel, so I'm still at 90, but I've got to have this angle. I want to lay it over like this, and so to do that, I just cut a wedge at 18 degrees here, no, that's going up at 18, and that's going to give, do the trick. So to make this laying it forward cut, I'll have the wedge in this direction and hold it right there. And then I'm going to make the other cut on this end, and I'll just change the wedge, flipping it, which will hold me in position this way, and I'll make that cut. All right? I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the saw and make those two cuts, and then we can make the cross cut. Here we go. Okay, so once again, while you're making these cuts, you'd be set up and you'd run them all through at one time. Now we want to make our vertical cut here, the shoulder cut, to remove this piece here and uh, get it so that it's the same thickness. I've got a piece we can just use as a feeler gauge here. I want to get it so it's the same, same thickness as one of our pieces. So I actually made this cut a little earlier, and oops, this is kind of what we're looking for to be flush that way. So this piece will help me set this up. Now we don't need this fence anymore. I'm going to set it aside. We're going to drop this down. Now here... 
I would have all these tabs of wood that are going to come off when I make my cut. So this would be a good place. If I got all those pieces, I want to show you the L fence. It allows for the waste to fall off freely with this space under here and not get trapped and pop and kick back. It's just a piece of two, it's just two pieces put together here, ripped so it's parallel. I actually put a little wax on the edge here so that it would slide easily because it's acting as your fence now right here. Now to get it up high enough, I'm just going to use a few pieces of MDF here and you just put your fence like that. That's going to be high enough my waste piece to fall free and the good part to be referencing off my L fence. So with that in position, just throw a couple clamps on there. Put one back here. And I'll throw one up here. So this modifies our table saw, makes it a little more flexible and safer to make this type of cut. So now we'll use our fence here and we would come up and reference off there. Now I could use a piece of my stock and just bring it over and I want this cut to meet, leave me with the thickness just so the thickness of my stock will be right there. So this dovetail, when it laps over, it will go all the way through. Now, this one was already set up, so I can actually use this to help me. Just a little heavy there. I believe that's perfect. Question if these, the plans for the saw horse are going to be made available. Oh, <laughs> I guess we could if you guys want them. I wasn't thinking it was going to be this complicated, but... <laughs> Arabian. <laughs> yeah, well, when you see these dovetails, it's kind of fun. Um, now, I'm going to set the height. I've got to drop it down a little bit. I'll use the actual piece. Oh, what did you say again? Oh. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm not sure about the plans being available. I, I guess if there's enough interest, I will make some plans. But um, I didn't realize there would be, but maybe, maybe it is getting more complicated. So there you go. I've got the mouth cut here. <laughs> and now I'm going to set this against my fence. I'm going to hold that angle. This is my L fence. So check it out. See how I'm indexing right off of it. So I can make this angled cut. I want to make a cut parallel to that so that it's going to lay, my leg is going to lay right in there. Okay? So there we go. And then I would readjust and run all the through the other end too. So let's go ahead and make this cut. And we'll head back to the bench. All right. Now we can head back to the workbench. Okay. So here we've got our piece. This is a kind of a lousy one. Let me get another one that's a little better. I guess it doesn't matter, does it? So now let's put it back in position. And I've got this block 
this is going to act as our mock-up. This is the actual rail dimension, but it's going to sit right on my piece right here. We'll bring up our pieces. and This is where we're going to use this as our guide for making the rest of it. And that looks perfect. Now I'll bring the other one over and right in on that mouth there. Okay, so that maps out. It looks exactly like the drawing. And everything is nice. It fits in there nice. It's square. Everything's true. I know it's going to go together really well. And that has to be in position in order for this to drop in. And if I slide it up, it'll stop. And it'll, in one location, it's going to be just perfect, where it feels dead on, flush on both sides. Now I'm going to get a piece I already cut earlier for this particular one. I've got a couple, a couple of them, actually. Now, I'm going to actually get this locked in a little better. And I'm going to do that by using some stops. So I've got little 5 8 inch 18-gauge um, brad. This is an 18-gauge brad nailer here. Um, a lot of you have seen this, the Grex gun. They're really nice. Um, there are other types you can get. But I'm using the 18-gauge just... I actually use these most not to assemble things and put them together, but to build jigs. They're really helpful. And I'm going to do it right now. So I want to set a little st stick down here at the bottom that I can stop fussing with it to get it flush at the bottom. And I'm actually just going to nail this right on here. And that's going to reference, I'll be able to reference down there. And then put another one on the other side. So once you have your drawing, you can just right on the board. It's just a piece of MDF that I'm on top of here. And each one, once I, once I get this locked in, it'll be so easy to position everything and put it together. So now I want to just have something on the outside here holding it at the correct angle and here. But what I'm going to do is throw a clamp across the top here to hold this in position right into the bird mouth here. So this piece is sitting nicely centered. No, that's not going to work. I'm going to get, grab one of the old trusty hand screws. This has to this is where they come in handy because they do this angle thing that not many clamps do. And I want to kind of grab this at the right angle here. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do it. Let's see. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to let the points dig in right here. That'll work fine. No, it won't. I gotta get a couple blocks. I've got some angle blocks over here. I gotta build it out just a touch. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna Yeah, that's in position there. I'm gonna hit those down at the bottom first. That will help us get stable. So I'll just do this one on this side. You can see that pencil line looks perfect. Everything's sitting right. This is just going to be a little, just a nice stop. Keep that leg right in position. Now I'll come over on this side. And before you nail this, you want to drop your clamps. Start falling apart. All right. So now I'm going to put this one in position and just tack that. Now these are nice and low so I can remove my pieces easily 
And now I can get this up here in position. I can apply some force down there. Everything's seated nicely. And I'm actually going to put with it centered here nicely. I'm going to put a stop right here on the top. There we go. Now these are 5 eighths long, so they shouldn't be going through. See, this can move easily. And there we are. Now, I should be able to clamp that together easily, more easily. Probably doesn't even matter. I don't think I need that clamped. No, I do. I'm going to try this one here. I need this. It's rubber. If I get it wet, it might give me enough tack to just... All I want to do is hold it for a minute here. No, it's not. So let me throw these angle blocks on here. Yeah, that was, that might work, Dean. They're way down the other end. I'm going to try this first. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put a little moisture on there. That helps them not to slide. And here we go. Try this again. With those angles, it should be better. Okay, there it is, holding nicely. All right. Whew. That thing is locked in, looking great. All right, so look at that. It's right in position. And I could even tack some here. Why don't I? Wouldn't hurt. They are all cut exactly the same length. So everything should fit fine. This is going to be an awesome little jig. I remember building a roof... Um, we made these special little uh, frames. I know I'm not saying this right, but we use gussets and everything to build the little um, hip roof that I have off of this shop. And we did it like this. We set up one form and we cut all our pieces and we made them in the same little form like this. So we got really good precision and every piece was just right. So when we nailed it to the wall, on a long kind of uh, chalk line, you would sight down the top of that roof and it was just beautiful. It was perfectly flat because everything was made consistently. So it's a little overkill for, right? But it actually helps you a lot just to do that. Simple. Then I'm going to take, now I'll take my piece that's offset and I'll slide it up. And look at that, it just falls in naturally right where it fits perfectly. Nice and tight. I'm flush out here and I'm tight on the inside shoulders as well. Now, what I want to do is before I can let this in as a dovetail, I got to cut my dovetails. So I'm just going to cut these and then we'll call it a night. I just want to show you this. So this angle here was just produced using my 1-5 slope right there. So this is the 1-5 slope. Now I needed it to be longer, so I transferred the angle onto this little bevel gauge. I love this one. It's like a nice rosewood, brass, got it an old tool show recently. And then I've got the other line I can get by setting up this marking gauge to the thickness of my material. They're all the same thickness, so if I just set this up, that little point is just barely going over there. So that's the thickness of my stock. So if I just come up on the end here and make a cut line, that's where I want to make that cut. And then I already made a, like a knife cut across the top there. So I've got to get rid of this and this.
So now to make this dovetail cut, I want to square right across the top. So let's go ahead and do that. And I would mark it the same on each end. I'll just do this one so you can see where we're heading here. Okay, so that has to be square across in order for this to fall in nicely. If it's angled, your dovetail is going to be too tight as you press fit. If it angles the other way, it's going to look really loose. So with that all marked out, I'm going to push the bench around so you can see a little better. And put this piece in the vise. I could actually angle it. Look at that. And make myself a straight shot. Now I'm going to get the dovetail saw. And I'm going to cut on the way side of the line. You know what? It doesn't even matter if I hit this line. What matters is that I'm square front to back. Because whatever shape I create here with this dovetail cut, I know those, everybody in the class last week got tired of hearing me say that. Every shape I cut with this first cut, this first shape, is going to get traced onto that. It's important, though, that it's true. It's 90 degrees front to back. That's the secret of a good dovetail. So here we go. I'm going to get it started. I don't know. You might want to be on the other side now. Sorry. Uh, we're going to just draw it to me. And I'm going to watch this saw track right across the top, right on that pencil line. Now I'm going to saw straight down. Right there. Trying to stay nice and true and square all the way down. Now I can turn it up and I'm going to saw across that shoulder. And I can use that wall as a guide. Let's see. Yeah, I'll do it from this side. I could do this on the bandsaw too, using the end as my guide, but this is more fun. Let me just pull it back. What? That should be popping out of there. There it is. All right, that looks nice. And I've just got to clean it up a little bit there. I don't want to get in your way. But I've got a little bit of a show there. Let me turn it around. I can turn it this way. You can see better. So you see that little lip of material right there? I can just turn in on that. This is a test for a chisel, this softer wood, because it wants, it's a little spongy. This chisel, I think I got a better edge on. Left over from the class. And I want to get right down in that corner and clean it up nice. So I do this to both ends, and that's my dovetail. Just, that's all I need. Just that nice little cut. You want to check it for square. That looks nice across there. And then this is the key, though. See? You want that square right there across the top so that when it press fits in, it'll fit. So once I've done that on both sides, I'll put my bench back. I'll have a nice little dovetail cut on both sides. And this is going to go into my end piece. And I'm going to make a line, like a reference line, to make sure we're the same height on both ends. Um, and then it'll get set right there. And when I get it in position, after I've cut the other one, I'm going to mark around it. I'll just make a temporary mark right here. I would make a line right here and right here. And this has to come out. Okay to the depth of this right here. And I get that depth by using a marking gauge. Again, I've got this one already set to 3 quarters of an inch right there. So that'll make my scribe right across there and there. And I'll carry those lines down, make a nice saw cut, and there you go. Now you can make these lines with a knife. 
to make it super accurate. But with a fine pencil line, if you just leave the pencil line, you can also make dovetails fit nicely. Now, I usually wood knife these, but it's a sawhorse. <laughs> you you got to keep that in mind. I mean, I'm not, it's not a dovetail drawer. And I, I'm going to do the pencil line material. Um, I know I've done the knife line before in other classes when we did the drawer on the shaker and table of the drawer. But I've never done it like this way where I, I pencil around and cut actually to a pencil line when we're trying to get the good fit. And I'm going to show you that it can happen and give you a really nice fit. And you get some squish factor with these softer woods. So, isn't it? It's starting to take shape. I mean, you can see almost how this is going to come together. Move this thing. This will just be one end. And when that's assembled, we'll have that dovetail going on both sides. Then the cross stretcher is going to be let in here as well. So when I did that little half cut, when I did this, cut this little half piece, I brought my stretcher material over as well, this material here, and I made that cut here. And then I made a side cut because this stretcher that goes between the two is going to have a dovetail on it as well, something like that. And that's going to get let right in the top here. So that'll go across the middle. See that? It's pretty cool. So we'll have a nice through dovetail there. And then these going into the legs. And we're going to put a little gusset on under here, actually, which I'll show you next time. So we'll finish it up next time. We'll cut in those dovetails. Uh, I had thought of running screws in, but you know what? It's... I think we'll just put some glue and uh, maybe some pin nails or something like that just to hold it for the glue. And up here, we will run screws in up at the top. Are there any questions? Sorry, let's get more detailed. Um, Stuart, I, it's really a personal taste preference. I have used that Japanese saw. At various times when I was early starting out, I tried them a bunch, and I did use a Japanese saw for a while to cut. But um, I got so I got one of these. I think while I was using the Japanese saw, this was the independent saw company which got bought out by Lee Nielsen at that time. So this has both names on it still. But um, and I started using this. I just love the traditional American handles. And I got so used to it that this is the saw I use to cut dovetails. You can get beautiful results with the Japanese saw. It's a very thin kerf. I end up using it a lot for cutting off tenons, for flush cutting, quick cuts of all kinds of utility because it is so fast, um, like I did over there. But for when it comes to dovetails, I'm using the American saw, which cuts on the push stroke. And that's that. Any other questions? Um, no, my mic is dead. Oh, oh, sorry. The camera lady's mic is dead. <laughs> Did no one know that? I think my battery. Question? No, I think it just died. Oh, okay. so you might want to repeat that question. Well, that just question was about what do I prefer? You probably inferred what I was talking about: Japanese or American saws. And oh, it's back. I'm that sorry. was my explanation. It's working. Okay. Maybe you weren't talking into it. Maybe that was just me. <coughs> Are we all set? Sorry to That's go long. That's the last of the questions here. All right. Sorry to go a little long tonight. Well, I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> I'm going to have one ready next time so we can kind of move through it quickly. And maybe I'll show you my turntable top. I'm going to use one of these roundabout uh, discs here to make a turntable so that I can use it when I'm spraying chairs and things and not have to walk all the way around. I just turn it like a cake decorator, right? Just turn that bad boy and... Can you guys imagine what my pantry shelves look like? <coughs> I mean, this is how he does sawhorses. Imagine my pantry shelves. <laughs> it's amazing. That's very kind. The, uh, it's like <laughs> the, the cobbler's kids don't have shoes, right? And uh, that's kind of... 
our house. We we have we have furniture in there, but it's not the finest. It's it's decent. Well, we are raising kids. Yeah, that kind of keeps you going. Yeah. So thank you so much for being a part of this. We're having fun here with this sawhorse, and uh, we'll get back to a real furniture project. And I'll make that announcement next Thursday night. So if you enjoy this content, go ahead and subscribe and hit that like, share, and ring the bell. And that makes us happy. <laughs> it helps us out, too. And also, if you're interested in plans, some of you have been asking about if I was going to make a plan for this, but I have furniture plans as well. You can check it out on epicwoodworking.com. And you can also sign up for our mailing list there if you want to see everything we got going and we have lots new of online courses yeah too. lots of courses on there as well thank you so much for being a part of this for hanging out tonight at the shop sorry i went a little long it's one of those weird nights oh it's maybe it's so humid but <laughs> no apologies <laughs> <That'd be great. laughs> we are glad that you showed up and glad to have you here in the shop i'll see you next time right back here Thursday night on Shop Night Live. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good to be with you.